Hey Reddit, when did your something not right here gut feeling ever save you? I was 15 years old and my mom dropped me off at McDonald's to get breakfast while she went across the street to get Starbucks. It was a shopping mall in Sababia and we were on the way to pick up a new kitten a few hours away. Instead of walking the hundred yards to my mom, I sat outside waiting for her to pick me up. Teenagers, I guess. As I'm standing there, a guy in an old station wagon with two kids in the back starts talking to me. He asks me where I'm going and I say whatever town it was. He says he's going there too with his kids and asks me if I want to come. I tell him no, that my mom is across the street and he comes closer. My gut is saying something is off, so I see a random woman walk out of Starbucks and I point to her and say that's my mom right there. He freaked out and left really quick. I still remember those two kids in the back seat. They looked so off. I wonder to this day if they're okay. Edit. I didn't tell my mom and I don't know why. I think I was scared she would be upset with me and not want to go get a kitten. I was barely 15 and teenagers are selfish buttheads. I finally told her a few years ago and she was super upset about it. I was so freaked out I didn't even think to get a plate. I grew up in a suburbia, but the rich kind of suburbia with this kind of stuff was never talked about. I wasn't into true crime, so I had no idea what you were supposed to do. If I had the knowledge I have now, I obviously would have handled it totally differently. The Starbucks part reminds me of a time where I had walked down to a local Starbucks alone when I was in 8th grade. While waiting for a drink, an older man complimented my metallic red nail polish. He said he liked it asked me where I got it and said he was interested because he got a chip on his boat the exact same color and was looking for an easy way to patch it up. I was an outgoing kid, so I chatted with him with my hand stretched, not towards him, out to gesture towards the polish. The weird part was he grabbed my hand and wouldn't let go. I got a weird feeling, but he just kept talking and holding my hand. Once my drink was cold, I quickly pulled my hands away, grabbed and mad dashed out. Mild story, but it still freaks me out to this day. In 2004, on Boxing Day, not me but my mother, family trip including all cousins and extended family on my dad's side to visit the coastal south of Sri Lanka on vacation. About 20 people in all. Well-planned trip. Last moment my mother didn't want to go. No reason at all. None of us could get her to explain why, but she refused to go. So we went inland on a different trip to see some other relatives. Around midday, the entire extended family now on both sides were sitting shocked in front of the television, watching the very same hotel we booked being washed away live by the tsunami. To date, she still can't explain what she felt. I smelled burning plastic early in the morning in my family cottage and almost went back to sleep. I was around 15, but got up to investigate. A socket on the outside of the building had caught fire and flames were shooting up the wall. The rest of my family was still sleeping and there wasn't enough smoke for the alarms to go off. I ran and got the fire extinguisher, got my dad up and put it in his hands and pointed him towards the fire. Stopped it and called the fire department. It's for stories like this why I always get up when I smell something burning. I get really stressed out about it. Two summers ago I woke up to the smell of fire and found out that a neighbor was burning leaves in his backyard and it had gone out of control. So scary. Edit. To clarify, since some people are getting edgy and go like, what the f***? Who doesn't worry when they smell of smoke? What the f***? I live in a rural town in a neighborhood close to the country. So there's a lot of burning leaves and having barbecues. You have to learn to recognize the different smells, leaves and kinds of wood, etc. Of course, if I smell smoke late at night, I'll call someone and investigate. But during the day, 99% probabilities it's controlled fire. About six years ago, I was up having coffee very early one summer. My husband and I heard an explosion and my meth addict neighbor screamed. He ran out back to see what was up. The guy was using M80s and blow a torch to get the blackberries out of his backyard. He thought it was awesome. I'm happy he didn't burn my house down. 
We're in a downtown area where houses are detached, but very close. I was president of a club, and a guy who'd recently joined just set off my alarm bells, but he never did anything wrong. I still couldn't shake the feeling he was off. I asked my best friend, a pretty burly guy, to just keep an eye on him during a conference we went to. Most of the club, minus me, went to a party at the conference. My best friend kept an eye on the weird guy for most of the night and ended up stopping him from raping a passed out drunk girl. I pretty much always trust my gut feelings now. We were looking at houses a while back and found one that was great location, would have been perfect size for us, it didn't appear to need any work other than the new carpet and stuff I wanted to do like painting and switching the it over from oil burning furnace. I just had a nagging feeling about it and my husband agreed. As much as we loved it, something was off with it. I actually thought ghost or something silly like that and we ended up passing on it. I was still kicking myself about it until a few months later, when it had a major electrical fire. The whole house and everything in it was a total loss, and the family that lived there barely got out alive. It wasn't mine, but my boss, actually. It was any old day at work. It was about to be dinner rush, and I was tired. As usual, I was going to go to the dollar store to get some Red Bull. I asked my manager if he wanted to split it because they were two for five dollars. He said no, but as soon as I reached the door, he said wait. I asked him what was wrong and he said I should go later. He didn't give me a reason and were pretty relaxed, so I told him to piss off as soon as I pushed the door outwards. I hear a sound I can't even describe aside from just breaking. Whatever it was, it was broken. That's all I knew. Turns out and Sav drove straight into the dollar store's front door and the Red Bull fridge. My manager has annoyed me like that a million times, but I'll never forget the time he saved my life with this bullshit. <laughs> my dad had to go to court to settle away overdue payment for the place he worked at. He was going to take me with him so I can be more exposed to the adult world, so to speak. However, that meant he would have to leave the office back door unlocked, so the rest of the staff couldn't clock in. He suddenly didn't feel right about it, and decided to have me man the office instead. He got T-boned outside the courthouse on the passenger side of the car that day. The car was totaled, and I would have gotten severely hurt if I was there. Edit. Wow, didn't expect people to love this story so much. To help clear some things up, we both first traveled together to his office to unlock the door. He got out of the car, unlocked the back door, and when he came back to the car, that's when he decided to tell me to stay at his office. It literally delayed him by only the few seconds it took for me to get out of said car. Not mine, but my dad's. I was downstairs helping him with some woodworking when I was 10 or 11. He went to run a 2 by 4 through the table so when he noticed I was at his elbow rather than behind him. He stopped and told me to never stand behind a board when it's going through the saw in the case it gets thrown. I thought he was being overly cautious and didn't have as good of a view from behind him. But whatever, I got behind him. He flipped on the saw and ran the board through. He only got one third of the way through, though when the blade hit a knot and flung the two by four hard enough to crash against the wall ten feet behind. If I hadn't moved, it would have hit me square in the chest and could have killed me. My former boss had a board kick out and, and hit him in the chest or stomach in his late sixties. They did an MRI or CAT scan, I never remembered the correct terminology, to check for internal bleeding. No injury found, but they found 11 aneurysms in his chest, stomach and legs. He had surgery quickly after to repair the worst, and then multiple surgeries to repair the rest over the eight years we worked together. An accident literally saved his life. <laughs>